Hello and welcome back everyone, Dino Mega here, and in today's video I'll share my top 10 fishing tips for open beta. Also, I was invited to participate in a fishing tournament on the last full day. You can come too if you want, more on that after the tips. Tip number one, cast distance matters. Now don't just drop your line in the water two feet in front of you and call it a day. That's not going to be good enough. Every fish you try to pull in will give you a struggle. Now what you should be doing is aiming for maximum distance. Maximizing your distance will make the tension mini game much easier, as in the amount of time it takes for the tension indicator to go from green to red. With short distances, this does not take very long, which makes reeling in fish very difficult. But with a max distance, it stretches this out, making reeling in fish a breeze every time. So if you've been struggling to pull in the fish, this is probably the reason. Now I don't even want to begin to think about how hard a legendary fish would be to pull up on a short cast. Now it takes about two seconds of holding down the mouse button to get a perfect cast. I found a good way to land this is by counting in your head. For example, when I click down, I start at one, two, three. On three, I release. Now I about doubled my chance of hitting max when I started doing it this way. I found three ways to increase my maximum cast distance, the easiest of which was by upgrading my fishing pole to a higher tiered one. Now the basic fishing pole gives you about 12 meters of cast distance, but the best ones you can get give you about 20. That's a big difference. You also gain a tiny amount of max distance for each level up you get in fishing. You can see this bonus value on the left side of the skills perk page. And the bonus adds up to 10 extra meters of cast distance at a level 200 fishing. And the last way I found to boost your casting distance is with the gear perks. You have two different types. You have a general catch-all called Fishing Reach. And this one will increase your cast distance by between 1 and 3%. And there's also a pair that will boost your cast distance by between 5 and 15% based on the time of the day. They're called Sun's Reach and Moon's Reach. Tip number two, make the tension game even easier. Now as you just discovered, the number one way to make the tension game easier is by utilizing the maximum cast distance. But it doesn't just stop there. There's also two focus attribute bonuses that each give you a 10% boost to line tension. The first at 50 and the other is at 200. And the last way I know how to make the tension game easier is by upgrading your fishing pole. Excluding the distance bonus, there also appears to be some kind of metric on the fishing poles that have a minor effect on the tension difficulty. Tip number three, the best fishing baits. Fishing baits are broken up into two categories, one for rarity and one for size. Then for each category, they're broken up again by water type. So you have four unique baits and each one of those comes in three different tiers. And each tier will boost your chance higher than the last. Now the best baits for boosting rarity are Firefly for freshwater and Glowworm for salt. Firefly bait can be found by picking up bulrushes along the rivers and swamps and Glowworm can be found by picking up flints at night. And I recommend the shoreline for flint. And the best baits for boosting size, oysters for freshwater and electric eel for salt. A good place to fish up oysters is in the salt waters and reef water. And for eel, I recommend the freshwater and brightwood. Fishing in two star or three star hotspots will be the easiest way to obtain both of these. To get the bait, you just salvage the raw catch. So as you can see, rarity boosting is pretty easy to get, but size will take a little bit of work. I think what they're handing at is for us to use the rarity bait to catch the fish for the size bait. You know, this makes me think they designed fishing with the idea that size is more valuable than rarity. Tip number four, need a lot of luck boosting gems? I recommend hitting up the hot spots in reef water. Oysters can be fished up there and oysters have a guaranteed chance to drop luck boosting pearls and salvage. Yep, you heard me, guaranteed. Now you have a pretty balanced chance of getting either a T4 or a T5 one from each oyster. You can also fish up oysters in First Light and Restless Shores. Uh, some of you might be wondering, do clams also have a guaranteed drop rate for pearls? And unfortunately the answer is no, they do not. But it is still a pretty high chance, maybe around 50%. However, you're only really going to get the lower tiered ones, T2 and Tier 3 from clams. Oysters is how you get the good ones. Tip number five, water depth and fishing. Now there's a lot of speculation about what water depth means for fishing. This is because the game doesn't give us any sort of clear indication. From my data, I was seeing maybe a small influence to size, but it was minimal at best. And I'm talking maybe a five to 10% difference. I mean, it does make sense. There's three different sizes and there's three different water depths. And the deeper the water depth, the bigger the fish is what I was noticing. So very shallow for small, shallow for medium and deep for large. But like I said, this was a very small difference. And just to be clear, you'll get all sizes and all water depths. And water depth for hot spots doesn't really seem to make a difference. It seems to be doing something all on its own there. Tip number six, do the fishing quest chain. Now, spoiler alert, I am about to mention some of the rewards from the fishing quest chain. So if you want to hear those, you know, jump ahead a little bit, move on to the next tip. Now, the fishing quest chain starts with Michael Shields, who can be found out the lake outside of the Windsward Settlement. And during my playthrough, there were 15 quests in this chain, and they take you all over the map, including the higher level regions. You have to be sneaky in some of these regions, especially if you're not max level. You know, I was in my mid to late 40s when I did the quest chain. I was 48 when I turned in the last one. And as you guessed, these quests will make you catch a lot of fish. You'll even have to catch a couple unique ones. 
A quest chain ends in Reekwater, and each quest rewards a fishing related piece of equipment or gear. This is where you get the fishing outfit from. The first few pieces you get are just cosmetic, but as you do the later quests, you'll get pieces that have perks on them. And the last quest rewards the legendary fishing pole. And the fishing pole came in a couple different variations. During closed beta, this fishing pole was actually uncommon and very lackluster. Let's hope they give it a little bit of a boost for launch. Now, I do need to warn you, there were a couple bugs I ran into with the quest chain during closed beta. Now, I'm not going to go over what the bugs were in this video, but if you run into any issues make sure you visit my website newworldfishingguide.com i have a page there with the fishing quest on it and on it i outline what the bugs were and how i was able to get around them i'll leave a link to this page in the description Tip number seven, the best fishing pole. Now I expected the legendary fishing poles to be the best, but during closed beta it was actually just an uncommon. Now if this doesn't change, your next best bet is gonna be going with crafted. And this is simply because you can pump Azoth into them for the perks. The max distance values for the legendary pole is also equal to that of the highest tiered crafted one at a base gear score. You know, as for the fishing poles that drop from certain enemies across the map, the ones I got didn't have any bonuses on them. You know, maybe the drop poles and legendary one are just simply for cosmetic use. And you know, while I do see a place for cosmetic poles, I really hope this changes for at least the legendary one. You know, make it feel a little bit more legendary. Now, I really dive deep in my previous videos for these next couple topics. So these are going to be more of a summary for those who haven't watched those and a refresher for those who have. Tip number eight, a crash course on fishing hotspots. Now the point of a hotspot is to give you an easier way to catch rare fish. You'll find between two and ten hotspots in each region, both in saltwater and in fresh. Reekwater and Evanscale Reeks are going to be my top choices for hotspots. They have the most higher tiered ones. You can find hotspots in your map before discovering them. Just look for the hexagon shapes. When you discover it, you'll see a fish and star icon. To discover a hotspot, you'll need to visit them as well as level your fishing skill. And the order that they unlocked is predetermined. You don't get to choose them. I was able to fish in them before being high enough to discover them. However, this seemed like it might have been a bug to me. At the hotspot, what you're looking for is the hotspot pool. It's about 3 meters wide and has fish jumping out of it. Make sure you land your line in the hotspot. You'll see landed on hotspot if you do. The bite rate is accelerated in hotspot pools. With bait, you'll get a bite almost instantly. Each tier of hotspot has a different minimum level quality of loot that you'll get. In the broad 1 star hotspots, you're still going to get common fish, but you'll get a lot more in common fish. In the rare two star hotspots, you're gonna get mostly uncommon, but you also get a lot of rare as well. And in three star secret hotspots, you're just gonna get rare. You can catch legendary fish in hotspots and catch them outside of hotspots as well. And in secret hotspots did seem to have a small boost to the chance of catching legendary fish, maybe a five to 10% boost. The number of fish in a hotspot is limited. Three star has about 10, two star has about 25, and one star has about 30. Now hotspot pools are like mining nodes, once they're depleted it'll take some time for them to respawn. For my data it take about 20 to 40 minutes depending on the tier, secret taking the longest. Tip number 9, the best way to level your fishing skill. Now the best way to level your fishing skill from my testing was sitting at a 2 star hotspot. When it's up, fish in it, when it's down, keep fishing right there. Don't travel between hotspots, just stick to the 2 star one. 3 star hotspot doesn't have enough fish in it and it also has a really long respawn timer. This is why the 2 star one is preferred over the 3 star. 1 star hotspot is a close second. It all comes down to the numbers, fish count, average rarity, experience per catch, and respawn timers. Experience earned is based on the rarity and the size of the fish. You'll get between 100 and 200 experience for most fish. Legendary fish will give you 550 experience points. Make sure you use the rarity boosting baits when fishing. You do not get bonus experience for fish caught in hotspots. It is equal to the same fish caught outside of a hotspot. I go over this strategy in a little bit more detail in my hotspot video. We also take a closer look at the numbers. Tip number 10, everything you need to know about fishing for treasure chests. Treasure chest is how it all started for me, all the fame and fortune. Now you can fish up treasure chests anywhere in any water type, but the best place for me was to fish them up in secret hotspots. This is because you're guaranteed to get at least rare loot and above from them. And each region will have between two and three other rare fish that you can catch alongside these. This means you have between a 25 to 33% chance of pulling up treasure chests every cast in a secret hotspot. I was able to pull up five back to back in one hotspot. Reek water has the highest number of secret hotspots, so it'd probably be the best zone to fish them up at max fishing. If you can boost your chance to catch rare fish high enough, rare hotspots would be also a good second choice. The first secret hotspot to unlock for you will be at Fisherman's Bend, which is on the west side of Windsward. You'll travel here a lot for a lot of the main story quests. And this first secret hotspot unlocks at level 12 fishing skill. So make sure you get your fishing skill to at least that before you start going out to do the main story quest. This way you can check to see if that hotspot's there every time you come back. The hotspot spawns right next to the bridge. I opened 100 of these chests during closed beta and I was getting between 25 and 50 coin. Getting between 6 and 10 ingots between platinum, silver, and gold. I was also getting between 3 and 5 gems between tier 2 and tier 5. Tier 5 was about a 3% drop rate for me. Tier 4 was about 25% drop rate. 
Bonus tip number one, how to find specific fish. Each region has a different table of fish for both saltwater and freshwater. You'll find a couple of fish of each variety in each of these tables, and most fish can be found in at least three different regions. Each region also has a unique legendary fish. I created a cheat sheet you can use to easily locate any fish. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Each fish in the list is broken up by rarity and then by alphabetical. You also see the water type and a list of two letter abbreviations. Each one's for a different region. There's a legend at the bottom left that tells you what each one stands for. I also included the rare salvage loot. I didn't include common fish in this list. It didn't seem necessary. Most common fish are pretty much just for fillets and oil. And for those of you who already have this cheat sheet, I did post a few updates since my last video about it. I also think there's going to be another update after open beta, so be ready for that. Bonus tip number two, watch out for the medium salmon mission. That's right, this mission is a time sink. You take this mission, you're gonna spend hours fishing. The numbers are just stacked against you. There's too many common fish and there's too many other sizes. We only get 77 hours to fish in this beta, so let's not waste any of it. Now remember, the point of this upcoming beta is to help AGS stress test the servers. It's okay to have fun while we do this, but don't forget, we also have a job to do. Make sure you do your part. If you find any bugs, make sure you report them on the forums. Also, please share the fishing hotspots. Remember, there's another human being behind those pixels that is just as excited to fish as you. There are plenty of fish, and there will always be another hotspot for you in the future. Now this Saturday the 11th at 4 p.m. PST, I was invited to participate and I will be attending an in-game fishing tournament hosted by GamerGunk TV. I told them I'll be there and I'm extending this invitation to all of you. Prizes, rules, server details, and all that important information can be found on their Discord. It doesn't cost anything and they're not paying me to promote this, nothing like that. I just thought it was a really cool idea and I wanted to share the details with you. If you're hooked on fishing, you should check it out. I'll post a link in the description if you're interested. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you have any questions about today's topic, let me know in the comments. Happy fishing, everyone, and thanks for watching.